Okay. So um, you might mention that you did interview for a couple of programs, and uh, I know a lot of uh, students or prospective applicants are looking for resources on how to prepare for uh, PhD interviews. So yeah, I think you would be a very good resource for them. Um, can you describe, you know, some of the key steps you took to prepare for for your PhD interviews, and you could also tell us how many interviews you you actually did. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So I have done a couple of interviews, not too many in my life. Um, but okay. So the first thing I do when preparing for an interview is I try to ask myself to think about all the questions I could be asked. Right. So. Not everyone has to do this, but I write out all these questions and I type out re responses and I rehearse these responses. Sometimes I get asked those specific questions and sometimes I get asked other questions I had no idea I was going to be asked. Um, and we're going to come to how to you get to answer those questions. So I think that's the first thing for me, thinking about all the things you could be asked. Um, so once you do that, now preparing your responses to those questions or rehearsing how to respond to those questions, I always use, and I use this for both writing and interviews, I use the STAR approach. It depends on the question you're asked to. So if you're asked a question that relates to something you've done in the past, or if you're asked a question that relates to some specific experience, mm -hmm. right? The best um, approach to use is the STAR approach. And I assume that most people listening to this are probably familiar with it. I'll just go very briefly. So STAR stands for the situation, T stand, S stands for the situation, T stands for the task, A stands for the action, and R stands for the results. So for example, if I say, tell me about how you have you know, demonstrated this, 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 and that, you shouldn't just go around the bush giving me a generic response. You should say, mm -hmm. you know, I've demonstrated this, this, and that, you know, um, skill in this way, right? There was this situation, and then this was what was required to be done, and then this was what I did, and this was the result of what I did, right? So you've yeah. told a story. Stories stick with people, and stories get to people beyond all the generic, you know, information you could just be mentioning rather than mention specific leadership skills, for example, or specific, you know, things relating to your experience, you probably want to give some stories. It's okay to say some other things, right? It's cheap in here and there, but in your stories, you could slot in these things. So for example, they're looking for specific skills. You could slot the skills while in while you're telling your story or your story mm -hmm. should show how you demonstrated these skills. Yeah. Um, so for example, could I talk about the few questions they normally ask? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, uh, before we come to that specific section, I want okay. you to briefly, for example, tell us how you did your initial research, how you gathered information about your panelists, uh, you know, the people you're going to uh, talk to, the program itself. What were the main, the critical information that you gathered before you even appeared on the interview? Okay. So the first thing was I read about the program. Mm -hmm. um, I read about the, the topic, the research topic, the program that was hosting, just because in the UK, usually there's a specific topic, but it's hosted within a specific department, for example. So I read about the topic and then I would Google the supervisors. The supervisors most times, not all the time, but sometimes are not usually a part of your interview. But Google the supervisors, go to their research profiles, check their current research and all the work they are doing and how my work fits into the work they are doing, you know. Um, then it's also important to Google the program as well. You want to be quite familiar with whatever specific things they would mention to you during the interview. So you want to know a lot about the program. It's difficult to know who is going to be on your interview panel. From my experience, I've never gotten to know who I would get to meet. So that's a difficult one to predict. Um, the other thing I do, I did for McGill, well, you, you could do for other interviews is I reached out to people in the program. So for McGill, I reached out to people, five, at least five people on LinkedIn and I asked them specific questions. And they were one of the reasons why I chose McGill because I got very impressive responses from like four or five different people on LinkedIn that had no idea I was email, I was like texting. Yeah. And they were colleagues, but they had no idea. They probably discussed it. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> they gave me 
a lot of information that I probably wouldn't have been able to find out from the website or anywhere else. So you probably will interact with people currently in the program. I also spoke to them when I was thinking about the choice of a supervisor. I tried to look for people supervised by that person you know, I spoke to them. So this is related to the interview. You could speak to them to get like very specific information yeah. that you probably are unable to find on the website. Um, and if anything is not clear, I would recommend emailing the department. They would give you, they would respond to almost any question you ask, except it's a question that they should not respond to. But in terms of getting information, check the website, check the program, Google the supervisors, look at their research footprints, what the people they collaborate with. You could see their co-authors, you know, and all of this information. Then speak to people who are currently in the program. LinkedIn is a very good resource. Most people respond on LinkedIn um, and then email people, email the department, basically, I think. Okay. In terms of getting information, that's what works for me. Yeah, I think I, I think that is pretty universal for a lot of interviews and uh, taking your time to go through the program, uh, researching uh, the specific details of the department and, and the kind of work they're doing, it's, it's, it's very, very important. Now, let's talk about the common interview questions. Uh, so all the programs that you, you interviewed, if, if you were to list, let's say, the five common uh, questions that run through those programs, what, what would those questions be? Okay. So for me, the first one is why are you interested in doing this PhD? That was always the first question that popped up. Why are you, you know, interested in this? So some of them would ask why you're interested in a PhD, just like just why you want to do a PhD at this point. Some others would ask why you're very much interested in the specific program. So you want to be able to demonstrate your motivation for the program. I would say be original um, as much as possible. Um, be original and be honest. So for me, in all my statements of purpose, and it's the truth, right? I had a lecture in my penultimate year that kind of moved me towards AMR. Um, you know, there's an AMR, global health, public health are very much linked. So yeah. it was in my penultimate year, I had this lecture on AMR and I was so engrossed and so interested in AMR. And that was what made me attend the, the conference in my final year. And that was when I learned about epidemiology. Right? And then I got involved in research in one way or the other, and then I did some work, and then I found myself where I was, right? And then I pursued a master's degree, and I really loved research, and I wanted to go deeper into research. So that was my story, and that was how I told it. So we all, whoever's watching this has a story, you know, and I would say just tell your story as genuinely as you can when you're asked why you're interested in the program. I, I keep using the word story because stories work. Um, I'm not saying you should... Okay, so some people write a statement of purpose, or for example, an interview, and they're talking about when they were five years old. I don't, I don't really, I, I don't really support all of those. But like, yeah. something genuine, right? If I talk about yeah. something that happened in, in my during my undergrad, that's okay. Let's talk, talk about something that happened at a conference. That's fine. During my masters, that's okay, right? Collaborating with people while doing this research or while reading this paper, or you know, I stumbled on this on the NIH website or the FDA's website, and I did some reading about it and everything. Those make sense. Okay. Yeah. So then, tell me about uh, tell, why are you interested in this PhD program? Okay. What are that question uh, was pretty common across? The next question I think they would normally ask, okay, well, it doesn't come in this order, but they would also ask for um, your strengths and weaknesses. That's usually one of the last questions. Um, I've seen different people suggest how to answer this question, and I'm not saying there's a universal way because you're going to be um, interviewed by different people. So what the response one person might find impressive, you know, what someone else is going to find impressive. I would also say be authentic, but don't shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. Um, if you are stating strengths, that's a very good opportunity to sell yourself and still use the star approach. So you don't just say that, for example, you have um, very, I mean, depending on what strength you want to mention, mm -hmm. describe the strength with something that has happened and how you were able to work around it and how that demonstrates this strength. Don't be, don't, don't mention like five things and, you know, just litter the whole interview room with all your strengths. Yeah. Be specific. Pick something that's, you know, solid and talk about it. Something that's going to be very useful, a transferable skill for your PhD program. 
um, for your weaknesses. So someone, I read something recently and someone said some people would mention a strength and like, you know, chip it in as like a weakness. <laughs> and I don't think that's advisable. Like when they say your weaknesses, like I said, don't shoot yourself in the foot. Don't say you ever get anything done, you know. You, yeah. You, don't uh-huh. do that. <laughs> you know, but we all have weaknesses, right? Um, yeah. Say something that's a genuine weakness, but not something that would because you want to put your best foot forward um and so just be honest okay. and don't for example you talk about the weakness but you could also talk about how you're working on that weakness or for example That's, specific strategies yeah. you've taken to overcome that weakness or how you've improved over the years you know with respect to that thing you're working on so i think that shows that you've acknowledged and identified this weakness mm-hmm and you're working on it and you're becoming a better person i think that that's a good way to approach that question yeah so okay so um why are you interested in in a phd um why are you interested in this specific program i guess and then uh tell us about you know uh your strengths and weaknesses that is like some of the last behavioral questions that you would you would likely get um but in your experience if for example at the end of the interview uh the interviewers ask you do you have any questions uh yeah. what what are some of the questions that you think uh, it's usually compelling up for people to ask because i have I've met a couple of people who who just say oh i don't have any questions for now which is which is pretty uh, which is not a standard if you want to make an impression you need to at least have a question in mind so what what question in your in your experience do you think are, are good questions to to ask the uh, the interview panel hmm. okay i got that question i think i agree it comes up frequently i would say that um i think it's good to ask a question that shows that you have you are very interested in this program and you've done your homework mm-hmm. so something specific to the program. So I know someone who got like four offers. She got offers from Emory, McGill, Michigan, and one other university. And she actually came to our program to Mm -hmm. attend one of the lectures to know if she was going to choose the program. Like she was so spoiled for choice. (laughs) So you you want to show that you know about what you're about to do. And you're very much like you want to be sure that you know, this is the best program for you. Um, you don't want to sound desperate. I know for some people that might be their only option. And, you know, that might be the only program they even apply to, or they might have applied to other programs. And this was the only interview they were able to make. But I mean, I can't give a specific question because it depends on the program. Yeah. But you want to ask an intelligence question. So for me, sometimes silence is better than you know if you're gonna ask a question that would <laughs> hmm, you bet you'd rather just not ask it yes yes but i think it's very important since you would have been informed about the interview and it's yes. something you have time to mm-hmm. prepare for i think it's very important to prepare a good question yeah so mm-hmm. you could say that you know you're considering or what for example you could talk about what opportunity the program offers to graduate students in a specific area maybe you tell them you know your career interest in the midterm or in the short term are these these this and that and you're looking to go into this after your phd or doing your phd and you want to know how much you know so opportunities or how much support or how much you know the university would be able to so like yeah how much how much how much support you're gonna have to be able to achieve that specific goal then it shows that you are thinking long term. You're not just desperate to get into the program, but you are very deliberate about this program and you're very deliberate about the career path you'd like to pursue. You mm-hmm. know, although we don't all have it figured out, and that's okay. Uh, um, I think that would be a good question. I don't uh, think it would be a good question to ask about money, um, funding. I think yeah. you should probably email the department if you have questions about funding, not exactly. the people who get to interview you. Mm-hmm. Um I think you also don't want to ask questions that have obvious answers. Answers you can find on the website. On the website. Answers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you don't want to ask those questions. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's that's fair. So uh, I know you you briefly mentioned uh, the STAR approach. Um, 
uh, that is like a, a very good strategy to use in answering some situational questions. Um, I don't know if, I mean, for the benefit of our viewers, you can, for example, take an example of, 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 of a situation or a question that demands the use of a star approach and then take us through how you would conceptualize uh, your response. Okay. Um, for example, if they say, tell us how you were able to, when, tell us about a time when you had a difficult task or tell us about a time when you, yeah, maybe tell us about a time when you had a difficult task and how you were able to, to achieve it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like that. that. I'm not saying that's the exact question they're going to ask. Yeah, that's like that. similar. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you could say that, um, you know, it's quite common for you to have experienced, like over the course of your career or your educational journey, you have experienced, you've had such experiences where you had so much to do or you had a task, you know, that was quite new to you and you had to walk through it. And then you could say, let me think about an example for myself. Um, say, for example, you had a project you had to work on. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time, right? Um, I could say that, you know, I was given this specific project. It was a research-based project and I was required to use certain tools and softwares that I hadn't used before. And I had a deadline and I had to provide, you know, complete all the work within a certain period of time. And so I would say that, you know, I was presented the, the work was presented to me during the meeting. And the first thing I tried to do was to get as much information as I could from my superiors. Right. And um, I asked all the questions I needed to ask and um, I got all of that information. And then I could say that I reached out to my network. So obviously I have colleagues, I have people that I work with. Right. And you could say you consulted all the resources you could consult. For example, you had um, there are free resources, for example, online. Say you're giving a job that involves some coding or maybe you need to work on R, for example. There are free R resources online. That's just an example. Mm -hmm. And you have a network of, you know, colleagues and people you could reach out to. And so you did all of that, right? And you, so that's, the, that's the, so you're given the situation. The situation was the specific project you had yeah. to work on. Mm -hmm. The task was what you needed to do. So you needed to, um, complete it within this period of time and you needed to produce these outputs. The action is the fact that you reached out to your network and you consulted all the resources you could yeah. probably took a short course, you know, um, just to make you familiar with, you know, that specific package or that specific program. You know, you could also say that you had to um, delegate some tasks. This may not be very relevant for PhD, maybe for like a work, maybe when you're applying for a job or something, but like you had to delegate certain things to certain people right um you had to do specific things differently and um you had to put in the extra work right so mm -hmm. you had to spend several hours you had to cut down on minor my um, things that like, so if you had other tasks that were more flexible that didn't have a very stiff deadline right you had to devote more time to doing this particular job and at the end of the day you were able to do it and you Basically, your team or the people who gave you the task were impressed by what you had done. Um, yeah. 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 And I have more. I use the star approach. So when I was applying for my student scholarship, I use it for like my leadership and networking experiences. Mm -hmm. It's more ideal for such. Yeah. It's very, if you want to give like a leadership or networking related experience, it's yeah. a very good tool. For my work experience, the star approach may not be the most, um, because when you want to talk about your work experience, you're not picking on one thing yeah. or mm -hmm. going, taking them through a process. So if you're going to talk about your work experience, you may not strictly use the STAR approach. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, as, as you rightly said, for some situations uh, that you think the STAR approach could fit in, you could you could easily uh, chip that in and, and use it as a guide uh, on yeah. how to, to, to respond. 